What's going on guys? It's 603 Bass. Doing things a little differently to start the season here. Something I mean to do for the well, third year in a row now was to go over everything that I own for all my fishing gear, all my tackle. Not necessarily rods yet, that's going to be a separate video. But go over my methods to the madness as to how and why I organize everything for the beginning of the year. Truth be told, this is actually the third attempt I've done <laughs> trying to make this video. Uh, the first one was just a haphazard mess. It was uh, when I was in between jobs for a few weeks and I was not really in a good spot uh, headspace wise. And then second attempt was actually a lot better, but it just didn't flow the way I wanted to. So attempt number three, and now it's actually all done in case you're curious. And we're gonna make this a lot quicker and a lot cleaner. What I had tried to do previously, uh, previously was I had everything laid on the floor and then I was like, oh, hey, watch me organize it. But I think this is a better idea. So without further ado, we're gonna go over how and why I organize everything. Background, the, the whole reason behind this is every year, I try and get better with the way I do things for my boat so that I can get things more organized, not for just what I own, but for what I intend to add to what I own as well. And previous to this year, I carried literally 100% of everything that I owned all the time. That's not a very efficient way to do things. <laughs> I only own, you know, it, it seems like a lot. And in some cases, you know, I guess it depends on what kind of an angler you are. Um, that is a lot or it is not a lot. Um, I would carry a single rod with me too. So what I'm trying to do is break everything down more specifically. So I'm only taking things specific to the season that I'm fishing in. That way I can leave half of this crap behind and ideally I can actually have additional room in the boat so the thing's not always fully loaded. That's the goal with all this. So let's talk about soft plastics. End of last season, I had a literal Huggies box full of random crap that I had picked up over the last like three months of the season. And it was ugly. I wasn't sure the best way to do this. So I kind of uh, agonized over this for a little bit. It's my engineer side of things where I over tend to overdo things. So what I actually found at Target was these perfect, uh, I don't have a label on them, but I think they're like six quart totes. I like to leave all my plastics in the original bags that they came in because for me it's easier to keep a quick mental note of what I have used, what I need more of, and the whole nine yards. So, as we're looking at this, we broke it down primarily by technique. So, I've got drop shots and shaky head baits. I've got tubes, worms, and those, that's kind of, can be anything. Primarily like six inch, eight inch worms, I T-rig, things like that. I've got, this is just Z-Man TRDs for Neds and Magic Flicks from Beast Coast. And actually, let's take a look at this because honestly, it's kind of ridiculous. I have a thing for Magic Flicks. If you watch any of my videos, you know it. Same thing with the Ned Rigs. I know a lot of people give them a lot of grief, but they just work. And this is a nice system. Though Those bags fit in there really well. You can see it from the side even really easily. As you can tell, there's a ton in there. Nice white duct tape, black marker on the top, got on the front. So when it's up here on my shelves, it's easy to see from that side. When it's in the boat, I look at it from the top down. Regardless, that is the way that I keep things organized. So it's easy to keep track, regardless where it is. Boat in here, I know what I'm doing. We've got my swim bait shelf, and this has kind of got a bit of everything. So I've got my paddles, swims, which is anything that is a soft body plastic swim bait. Um, you know, you can probably see the KVD perfect plastics in there. Uh, I've got some stuff from zero baits, which is out of Utah. He makes some really good stuff. I've got a whole bunch of stuff. This is my finesse one. This is more like Z man stuff. Kytex. Uh, I'm not sure what else is in there. These two are kind of my pride and joys. I got my small swim baits, which is more Kytex, but there's actually a ton of beast coast in here too. Some of the chaos X's, which have been discontinued. Um, this is a, a much bigger tote, but it's nice because this works really well for like this clamshell packaging. This is just the striking rage swimmer. These are good for like chatterbait trailers and stuff. Oh, I got some six cents in there and actually I take that back. That one does not have any of my beast coast that I kept everything in the large swim bait box. So this is nice. Again, same deal. Beast Coast makes phenomenal packaging where it's got all this clamshell. So there's my some more of my Chaos X's, which unfortunately he's kind of discontinuing, which sucks. But these are great. 
And then I've got some creeps that kind of hide in the back, which is great because they hide back here. Shh, that one's good. Uh, and then the rest of these are Miyagi's. Um, and this is going to actually get more because I have a few more stuff that I've ordered that's on the way. Uh, not just from Beast Coast, but from a few other vendors as well. But primarily Beast Coast stuff is on the way to finish filling that out. And actually, before I get too far, I have a whole other stack of empty totes that I can wait to fill depending because, you know, again, I know that I want to get more stuff and start filling it out. So it, the other added benefit of this too is I'm trying to keep everything organized. So everything's kind of by category. Yeah. Swim baits, more finessey kind of stuff. My jig stuff. This is what started this. Uh, first and foremost, I'm a jig fisherman. It is the first rod and almost always the last rod I'll pick up when I'm out fishing. And I have it tied on from ice out to ice in. I know a jerk bait is phenomenal, but for me, I will live and die by the jig. I can make it work again, ice out to ice in. So that's what really drove this is my jig trailer collection was getting out of hand. So one of these, and again, you know, they're good sized totes and this isn't too crazy for how much this is full. That's just black and blue craws, like legit craw trailers with the looks like a craw. You know, Nothing that needs to be said. These are all black and blue, but kind of anything that I would more quantify as like flipping baits that aren't, they don't look like a traditional craw. I can use them as jig trailers and I even often do, but these are more my typical, like I will flip and pitch with these. And then I did the same thing for green and browns. Um, these are just either straight greens, straight browns, whatever. This one is actually just like a watermelon pumpkin color. And then this one has kind of got everything else green brown. And then, you know, for when I don't feel like trying really hard when I have a really bad day, I've got my box of Senkos and Flukes because, let's face it, everybody that's had a bad day has had to throw a Senko. And that's when you know you've had a really bad day. Uh, and then this is kind of a cluster of everything else. But this is my day box, and that's got, like, all my general tools. I've got some scents in there. Random bags of plastics find their way in. Scale. Um, I've got some hair jigs that need to find a home, so that's kind of what goes in there. And then, you know, again, this is where I really break things down. I've got this Bass Mafia box. This is literally just tungsten. And I'll open it up so you can see kind of what we're working with here. New Hampshire is a lead-free state, so I've got football jigs and more football jigs and more football jigs and more football jigs. It's crazy. I got ball heads, shaky heads. Um, some smaller, uh, those are actually tin football jigs. I was trying to do something different with. I don't really use them. Uh, I've got wobble heads and nail weights. Uh, what I tried to do was, this is going to be 3 8 with a brush guard, 3 8 no brush guard, uh, half ounce with brush guard, and then half ounce, no brush guard. And then the rest are just like odds, ends, and sizes. I've got one just for drop shot. I know I said that first and foremost, I am a jig fisherman. Second... I'm a finesse fisherman. I made it a point many years ago to be as well balanced an angler as I could because if you're fishing tournaments here in New Hampshire, you will one weekend go from a flooded reservoir, you know, it has a dam built up, so went from a river to a reservoir, average depth outside of where the original riverbed was will probably be anywhere from like five to eight feet, and it will be choked to death with weeds, maybe see down a foot. And then the next weekend you'll be fishing Winnipesaukee, which is a 42,000 acre glacial lake, which is stupidly clear. There's like a whole northern section that fishes kind of like a reservoir in a, in a sense where it's shallower, there's a lot more weeds, the water's stained, but for the most part, the rest of that lake is glacial, exactly what you'd think. Deep, clear, clean, sandy rock. So uh, that's why I have things like this, where I'm completely dedicated to finesse stuff. And this is just drop shot weights and Ned hooks. Uh, but then I actually have a few rows that's dedicated just to doing like you know, my regular hooks, if I'm Texas rigging, uh, Wacky Senko, whatever, anything like that. And then I've got another one that is dedicated just to underspin hooks, and don't look at that. Uh, <laughs> Okashiras, that's something I would get uh, got into last year that I'm pretty hyped about. Uh, and then last but not least, because I fish from Isao to ice in, blade baits. And that's something that I really worked on the last few years, and now I've got a box dedicated just to, to blade baits. And I got this little... It's like an ice jig. I forget what the heck that was. But I have got whites and golds and silvers and reds and perch and black and yada, yada, yada. Ah, this is where it gets to be a little more fun. So random weights for, I've got worm weights. I've got sea rig weights. 
<laughs> uh, all right, so uh, one of my other favorite things to do if I'm not jigs or finesse is spinner baits. So that thing is full. And then I got a whole nother bag that I got from Rocky Ledge while I was at the New Hampshire Fishing Expo uh, just a few weeks ago here in Milford, New Hampshire. So I need a second spinnerbait box. I love throwing a spinnerbait. Uh, what do I got? What's left? I have the chatterbait box. So again, same deal when it's in here on the shelf. I have it marked on the outside, but then when it's in the boat, I'm looking for the top down. This is a little bit uh, harder to read from your standpoint. There we go. But when I'm in the boat, I'm looking down, I can read it just fine. That's just chatterbaits. That's just dark sleepers. Those are twin-tailed grubs. Um, pretty much just chompers and Yamamatos. And these are an assortment of goby baits that I accrued both last year in August when I went to the St. Lawrence River. And then again, um, just over the course of this winter when I was collecting stuff at uh, random expos. So from there, we're going up top. And this is like the rest of my hard baits and stuff. I have, oh boy, so much stuff. <laughs> uh, these are like just general football heads. I've got like rubber tea stops from flipping and then I got the Miki heads. I've got um, in here random swim baits and all my spy baits. So this is kind of like, like you can probably see it up in here. I've got, if I could take this down without making a mess, let's do that. So anyway, you know, I've got all these up here. These are just jigs. One up top is all brown and greens. And then the one below it is just black and blues. Again, that's looking light because it's spring. So that's what I'm throwing a lot of. I've got square bills, shallow cranks, swim jigs, something else I've been fishing a ton of lately. So I got a ton of Beast Coast in there that I've been dying to throw. I got the sexy new red one in there. Oh boy. Okay, so this is the one I was trying to get. This is kind of like my odds and ends because I don't have a ton of these things. Uh, with the exception of the spy baits. That's something I tried to get into last year. I bought a bunch from went to the St. Lawrence and I was worried about pike. So I actually got some really nice goby ones. Some perch pattern ones. Don't look at those. I don't want you to see those. <laughs> I've got my HUD. Like this is kind of bigger stuff that I couldn't find a home for. I haven't the freaking faintest idea what this one was called. I forget. I got this from Dragon Custom Tackle. Paint job on it is phenomenal. For the life of me, I can't remember what bait this actually is. But it swims really nice. I can't hold it straight. I'm sorry. And I just haven't really used it. I got a perch pattern one in there. Uh, BBZ Rat, you know, again, Whopper Plopper, uh, six inch HUD, that's the Deluxe 68 Weedless. So that's kind of like my odds and ends one. This one, doing a bad job off the camera. I like to drop stuff, it's fun times. This is that rubber stop, T stops thing. So something I wanted to try because they were cheap. And what you can do with these is it. Uh, it's just a peg. Instead of using like a bobber stop, you use these rubber T stops. You slide them through with your line and it keeps your uh, bullet weight pegged for when you're flipping a pitching. Works great. These are like three quarter ounce and half ounce football heads uh, from lead free bass jigs out of Massachusetts. And they're all like one aught hooks. So I, I don't want to tell you what that's for. Same thing with these. I got some Tamiki heads. And yeah, that's some stuff that I've been trying to work on that some. Very, very, very helpful people have been trying to help me out with the last two years from trying to learn stuff. So up here, I'm not going to take it down, uh, except for maybe this one. I'm kind of embarrassed by this. For those of you that watch my channel for a long time, what's the one thing that I say that I hate the most? Jerkbait. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's two that aren't in here because I didn't put them away properly. I'm sorry, I'm not showing that very well. Um, Mega Bass Vision 110s, and that's a 110 plus one. The other one is tied up on there right now, and then I've got another uh, Lucky Craft SP80 over there, and I've got one more jerk bait. Where is that one hiding? I'm pretty sure I have 10 Vision 110s right now, and those aren't cheap. I think it's hiding in here somewhere. And then these are all just <laughs> random ones. I've got a bunch of Lucky Crafts, uh, Rapalas, some Berkeley Cutters, so, uh, a mixed stick. Who the heck made that one? The Spro mixed stick? I forget. And then I've got a handful of custom painted ones from Dragon Tackle. Uh, Dragon Custom Tackle as well. I've got some smelt colors. I got a random bunch of random blues. Like I'm, this is embarrassing. I have two of these boxes dedicated to the bait that I hate the most because I've just been that desperate to try and learn it. Go figure. This one I use a lot more. That's my lipless and deep diving crankbaits. I used to do a lot more of this back in the day, but I'm getting back into it. 
This is more non-lead tackle. This is kind of crazy. This needs a, a better way, but I've got like belly weighted hooks and I've got tube hooks and I've got football heads and I got the Mickey heads. And I got swim bait heads. So I've, I've really got my terminal tackle really well organized. So it's down. That's just random top water. So I'm going to try and put this away as I continue to talk and wrap this up. That is the, the gist of how I've organized a lot of this tackle. You know, again, the, the big idea behind it all, I suppose I could do this up here, is I wanted to make everything easily accessible, easily identifiable, so that anybody at any point could just reach in and grab what they needed. And I think I've done a pretty good job of that. And I've got this all organized now so that it's all very, very easy. I'm not even, God, I'm terrible at this. Um, you know, I, I come in here at the end of the day when I'm done fishing, I put everything away. A lot of this is just going to stay in the boat. I, I've actually already been out a few times this season. Again, this is attempt number three for me trying to do this video. Typically, I won't keep all this in here. Like, my jig trailers are going to live in the boat. <laughs> uh, my Neds and Magic Flicks, mostly swim baits. Obviously, all that terminal tackle. That's going to live in the boat pretty much season round. And then day box comes in so I can go ahead and organize it. Like, I've already got a bunch of random crap. There's other things here. I still have that loose Super Duty. I'm waiting on a custom-made swim bait rod that's going on on my line for need to be line. I take my, my graphs in every night because I just don't trust people. And it would really suck if my graphs were stolen. And then that's it. Like, everything that I need fishing-wise is here. I've got random stuff, like old random stuff um, from my old hummingbirds. I've got stuff from the Skeeter that just needs to be organized. I've got my keel shield that needs to go on. Um, this is my cooler that I take now when I go fishing. I've always had some form of cooler on the boat. Now I've got this nice one from Ego. I'm sorry about the lighting. I'm doing the best I can. Old rods I just took down. That's just like old antique fishing stuff. This is my GoPro corner. So I've got extra mounts and stuff that, and cables for charging if I need to grab it. And then this is my lure customization corner. I've got Sharpies. I've got die markers hiding underneath all these spare Beast Coast lures. Extra hooks, line conditioner, extra line. I've got a line spooler station. I've got more hooks in there. Like extra hook keepers <laughs> suspend dots that's just where i keep a little travel bag for a little travel tackle bag for when i feel like shore fishing my inflatable life vest goes there i'm really really happy now with where i'm at every year i try and get better with what it is i'm trying to do so that i can make it easier to not only find what i have but to keep what i have organized and to expand on what i have in areas i don't want to and i think i've done a pretty good job of that it's not ideal but given the space that I have, I think it's a pretty damn good system. So, I'm pretty happy where it's at. I hope it wasn't too long-winded. I know it's probably been like 20 minutes now at this point. But I want to be thorough in my rationale and exactly how I broke everything down so you can see how I got to this point. I used to just be a slob and literally just throw everything in the freaking bilge of the boat and all my storage piece, uh, areas and just dig through it, find out what you need, <laughs> and go from there. And now I've got everything organized so that it's all very easy to find. I can minimize time looking for things in the water. So it's just about creating good habits, especially when it comes to turning time. I know exactly where everything is. Waste less time trying to find stuff and retie and just fish, which is exactly where I'm going to be at. So thank you all for watching. Greatly appreciate it. That's the end. This That's part one. Part two that I'm going to do in a few days here is all the new rods. I was going to do a video where I talked about my old rods and how I had them set up, and then, hey, look, there's a new rod. So that's kind of pointless. So I'm just going to do new rods, and that'll be next. And I'm excited about that because I got a bunch of new loose stuff. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six new loose rods. I've got uh, two new loose reels, one of which is <laughs> down there. That's my kid's stuff. And he's got my $120 loose reel on his, like, $10 ugly stick. He needed a reel. It works. And I'm waiting on two rods still. One's from um, Wicked Custom Rods. It's going to be a tube rod. So I'll have a fourth spinning rod set up, which would be awesome. And then my first real big boy swim bait rod, which I'm really excited about. And that's a Louis Super Duty 300 It's going to go on. That's next. So thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Hopefully I didn't bore you to death. If I did, go ahead and tell me I suck in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Catch you in the next one.